Welcome all to an exclusive webinar on standardized test and pre-departure requirements. So uh, in today's webinar, we're going to speak about the overview of GRE, IELTS and the TOEFL test. So importance of taking these tests and their test patterns. So how you can, you know, uh, what are the strategies to crack these tests and all. So and later we'll be speak, uh, speaking about the fund for the university fee, securing the best loan options. You know, finding accommodation at an affordable price in the foreign country, your dream country, and uh, the bank accounts to trans—I mean, transfer your funds, your forex, air tickets, and SIM cards, and lot more. So I can see a lot of students joining. So let me give two more minutes for them to join. Meanwhile, let me check my audio. So if I'm audible, do drop in yes in the chat box. And chat box is where we're going to communicate. So if you have any queries, doubts, uh, questions and everything, you can just drop it in the chat box. And if you're facing any difficulties also, you can just uh, let me know in the chat box itself. Okay, fine. I'll just start the session by giving a small introduction about Galvanize, so which is founded and managed by al alumni of Harvard, Stanford, IIT Madras, and IIM Ahmedabad. So we give end-to-end -end personalized solution for students as well as working professional. Uh, starting from uh, like personalized test of preparation for uh, SAT, GRE, TOEFL, and IELTS. So we also give uh, you know uh, admission counseling for bachelor's, master's, and doctorate degrees uh, by our experts. And we also assist you in uh, the last minute uh, preparations also, like uh, you know matching you up with the education loan providers, uh, courier services, forex, students insurance, your travel insurance, and a lot more. So Galvanize brand is built by our popular products and services starting from our mobile hubs like top rank mobile hubs for GRE, SAT and Vocab. So you can find these, uh, you know, uh, apps in your uh, Play Store as well as your High Store. So we have like uh, users from different countries, like more than uh, 195 plus countries. And we have crossed uh, like 1 million uh, organic downloads so far. So next we have the synchronized online test prep. So we have it for GRE, IELTS and the TOEFL and SAT as well as. Uh, so for those, uh, we have customers from uh, 65 plus countries and we and those students or uh, the working professional who have enrolled with us uh, have shown 20 percentiles improvement in the actual you know test they have taken. So then we have the admission counseling also like the online admission counseling for undergrads, masters, doctorates and MBA. And we have customers from uh, 20 plus countries and like 99 percentile of, of them have received the admits to 140 plus specialization across 16 plus countries. So and for today's host, we have uh, Soumya Ma, uh, who uh, who is an, uh, you know, who is holding in 15 plus years of experience in software development, teaching and training and content development. So ma'am can make, you know, students fall in love with Max and uh, she is not just an ordinary tutor. And at uh, Galt she is responsible for math uh, curriculum helping students to reach their uh, targets, like targeted score. So ma'am, uh, she is also personally respond uh, to any, you know, math doubts you have and uh, host excited webinars. So ma'am will uh, tell you the secrets to score, uh, given high score, like get a high score uh, for GRE IELTS in the TOEFL. So welcome ma'am. So, and we also have uh, um, Lavinia ma'am with us. So ma'am uh, is in postgraduate in MS uh, psychology and uh, completed international graduation diploma and counseling skills so has two decades hands of experience in counseling and ma'am holds and master's degree in uh, public administration pg diploma in yoga and naturopathy so she has also been a resource uh, person for setting you uh, uh, setting up the mphil curriculum for uh, madras school of social service and for a uh, project putri uh, by avatar group so ma'am is a certified life skill trainer Welcome you also, ma'am, for this thing. So I'll just pass on uh, to you. You can just take it over from your ma'am. Um, thank you, Gita. Thank you for the good introduction. Uh, hello, everybody. So this is a sequel of the webinars that we have been having from Saturday about uh, the virtual workshop on overseas educations. Right? I, I believe most of you would have attended the admissions uh, sessions that went on yesterday and this morning. And now we have to understand what are the procedures to get admitted right there is a basic qualification for you to get admitted i believe like most of you are uh, it's like here most of you are students here it's a mixed crowd i believe and there are some parents a few many students here many college goers here so all of you dream of going abroad right 
to go abroad, what is the first step? You are in your college. What should I do to go abroad? So first step is to take some test. That's your first step towards going abroad. What is that test? If you are a college going student, you have to take the stand based test called as GRE. This is a mandatory test required by most of the universities abroad. So you take the GRE, get a good score. GRE is graduate record examination. It's accepted worldwide in most of the countries. Almost all the countries accept GRE score for their uh, masters and also for their PhD research programs. So it's a very important requirement for USA in particular, right? Uh, though other US, other countries also accept, it's very, very important requirement for USA universities. So to write, you write a GRE score, what is your dream? You have to get into a good university abroad and it could be for your research or for your masters. And then from there, you want to get into a high profile job, advancement in career. So this is your first step. First step is take your GRE. So GRE is administered by an uh, organization called as Educational Testing Services or ETS. So that's the organization that administers GRE. Why do universities need GRE scores? So you have your college, right? Cur college curriculum is that you are taking lots of tests as an engineering graduate. Most of you would be engineering graduate, I guess. That could be arts and science field also, but definitely Colleges don't exempt you from tests, right? You have lots of examinations, semester exams, unit tests, all those things would be there. So you take all those tests, but despite that, the universities do require you to write this GRE. Why is that GRE require, required, right? So apart from the GPA, right? So they, have, they need to have a standardized way of testing students across the globe. All over the world, people come to US or to another countries to study for a program for master's or PhD program or research program, right? So to equalize them or to normalize that, they, they can't like each university or each, even in India, if you look at it, each college is a different way of grading the students, right? Some could be on a scale of 100, some could be on a scale of 10. So to make it normalized, GRE is one standardized test that's accepted by universities. So GRE scores provide universities a reasonable independent ranking of basic competency that's a very important point so so that gauges your skill like how competent you are if you look at gre there are like two skills tested your way of writing your english skills your communication skills and also your math skills basic aptitude and mathematics both are the basic skills that are tested in gre so this is basically even if you get a low gpa in college right you don't have to worry about it get a very good gre score definitely you will get into a dream university of your choice because GRE is one major factor to get admitted to university. Though GPA also matters, but getting a very good score in GRE compensates for, if at all, you get a low score in your college. Now, GRE is conducted in more than 1,000 centers across 180 countries. So, <clears throat> based on the country of citizenship, right? So you will have two options normally because of COVID, they brought in this at home GRE at home testing, which is not preferred by most of the universities. Right now, uh, most universities prefer you to take the GRE in the test center only. So though in the ETS website, it will be given that you can take the at home option or the normal uh, GRE value, go to the testing center and take it. Avoid as much as possible taking it at home because that is not accepted by many universities better to take it on the, uh, on the testing center itself. Now, test fee is $228 per attempt for Indian test takers. This is as of now, but latest uh, uh, fee for GRE. Now, test scores, when you take the test, right, you can send that score immediately to four universities free of cost. So that'll be, uh, you'll be asked during that uh, GRE, when you write the test itself, you'll be asked, for four universities to which you can send the score free of cost. As soon as you complete the set test, it's an online test. GRE is an online test. Once you complete the test, the score will be automatically sent to four universities that you're going to list during the test date. If you want to send it to additional universities, more universities, apart from the four universities, you can do it at an additional cost of $30 per uh, score report. 
Now, GRE score is valid for five years. So if you're going to take it now, you can have the same GRE score for five years at the end of fourth year if you want to go and uh, do your uh, study abroad, right? Maybe you want to work and then later you want to go abroad or you are in the first year of college and then you want to take it finished off now itself. And then after four years, definitely you want to apply for universities and go abroad. You can always do that because GRE validity is for five years. So one can attend the GRE unlimited number of times, but then see first day you attempt it between there should be a 21 days gap between two tests, two GRE tests that you are going to attempt. You can attempt it unlimited number of times, but one can attempt the GRE once in 21 days. That 21 days gap is very much required and a maximum of five times in a period of 12 months, right? But you can attempt it any number of times, but within that one year, it has to be just five times you can attempt. And then there should be a gap of 21 days between two GRE attempts. How to register for GRE? There are some basic ID requirements. Normally, passport is the very primary ID, very valid ID that is required for you to register for GRE. But then due to COVID, right, some students who had applied for passport have still not got the slot. They have not got the passport. For now, on a temporary basis, they are even allowing Aadhaar card to register for GRE. Only for Indian citizens is allowed. On a country basis, each country has their own different ID requirements to register for GRE. For India, right now, they do accept Aadhaar card. But definitely, that is not preferable. If you have a passport, please go for it. Try to book a slot, get a slot and go. Since it's crowded because of COVID, there's so, so many backlogs and all that. Therefore, they have accepted Aadhaar card right now. And a general test, GRE general test is the basic requirement. If you want to go for a PhD specialized, specialized in some subject, some universities do ask for a GRE subject test, but most universities do accept only the GRE general test itself to get you admission into your PhD programs. So what is GRE? GRE comprises of, as I told you, both the English test and the math test. It tests your ability to uh, perform well, your verbal ability, right? Your, the way you communicate or how well you write, all those things, all those skills are tested. So it's a verbal part that's tested. Also your quantitative reasoning skills, quantitative aptitude or quantitative reasoning skills is tested. So these are the two parts, that is English and math. These are mandatory. Even if you are a, a what do we say, arts major, you have what do I say? You have not taken math for several years. Like for example, you you would have taken a bio group or pure science group after your tenth grade, and you have you have lost touch with math. Still, you have to learn, prepare for your math quantitative reasoning thing, and you have to take this math part also. So GRE consists of both the verbal and the quantitative reasoning. So as you can see, the score range is one thirty to one seventy. That's the beauty about TTS, right? So most of us are very scared of this zero, right? We don't want to see the number zero in our scorecard. We all have the zero phobia. For all those test takers, this to avoid to those who have the zero phobia, right? They don't give you a score of zero. Just by taking your ID card, right? Your passport, and then going and sitting in the test center, you get a 130 score in verbal and 130 quant and 260 just by attending the GRE exam on the test date with a valid ID card, you get a score of 260. That is guaranteed. And then from there, obviously universities would know, right? If you get a 260 and submit your score, definitely universities would know that you have not done very well in the uh, GRE. Of course, you have to boost your score. I'm just saying that you don't have to say, feel bad that you will get a zero because you have not attempted anything or something like that. The lowest score is 260 here. That is least for verbal is 130, least for quant is 130. And the maximum is 170 in each verbal and quant. <clears throat> Total score is 340. And apart from the verbal and the quantitative reasoning sections, that is also called as something called as analytical writing section. Look at the importance given for English here. So even if you are a pure science major, you are an engineering major, right? We all have this tendency to some, somehow ignore that language. Even in schools or in colleges, they we don't even, even in schools, right? English. For the English exam, we normally study for five or 10 minutes just before, before the day of the exam. You will not do that in GRE. GRE, you have an analytical writing section and you have a verbal section, which is very, very important. The reason is when you go for your master's or for your research, right? you need to learn to 
there are several things that you need to learn. You need to learn to write your resume properly. You need to be able to communicate with the professor. You need to be able to understand what the professor is speaking, right? That their accents and all that you need to be able to understand. You don't have to necessarily have that accent to speak to them. You can put your own uh, way of speaking. That's that's not a problem. But you need to be able to understand the professor, right? That listening skills, speaking skills. How do you communicate with the professor? All those things, those skills you will develop when you prepare for this GRE exam. GRE, IELTS, TOEFL, all these standardized tests helps you hone that skill. Make you, what do we say, comfortable with all those skills that is required for you to survive in an English-speaking country like USA or Australia or Netherlands or any English-speaking country like United Kingdom, right? So you should be able to understand and also for a research paper, when you look at it, the specifications will be given to you. It's not only for a research paper. If you go for a work, right, they give you a project and they give you a specifications. You should be able to comprehend, analyze what that project is all about. It's all given to you. You should be able to take ownership of it and then analyze what it is, come out with the specification on your own. All these skills you will develop when through this preparation for GRE. So that is what the skills is tested in GRE also in the analytical writing and the verbal section of GRE. That much importance is given to English part of GRE. And fortunately for us, there is no negative marking in GRE, so which we are all scared of, right? We took, for example, JE Joint Entrance Examination in India. We are all so scared of this negative marking. You write five answers right, five answers wrong, your answer will be marked will be zero. That is not the case in GRE. If you look at this beauty here, there is no negative marking and there are like raw score. Every question has got one point. So if you skip a question, it does not add value in GRE, right? At the most, we normally tell the students, don't skip any question because there is a most chance that you might get it right if you just make a logical guess. Make a logical guess and move on. If you get it right, you're going to get points. If you get it wrong, you're not going to lose points. So there is no negative marking. This is a very important thing. For the GRE verbal and the quant section, there is a one point increment. For analytical writing section, there's a half point increment. Analytical writing essays will be given to you. You might have to analyze the essays. It could be somebody else's essays or you might have to write your own essay based on a topic that's given to you. We'll dwell into that deeper uh, in the later part of the sections. Now, so when Gita was talking about it, right, when she was giving the introduction of it, she said that there is a 20 percentile improvement in the scores of students who have enrolled with Calvinize. She didn't talk about percentage there, percentile. That is the watchword for GRE. So whatever scores you get that is associated with something called as percentile. What is a percentile? Percentile, crudely speaking, is percentage below. Your score is compared with other test takers on that particular day. So you get a score and then that is scaled up. Right? You get, so those questions are there, like 30 questions will be there. You have to complete in so much time. And then that score will be scaled up to one between for a range of in a range of 130 to 170. That score, every score has got an associated percentile with it. So, for example, here if you look at it, your percentile is more important than your scaled score. 164 stands at the 94th percentile in verbal, 161, 77th percentile, 4.5, that's the analytical writing section. For a grade of six, right? This fellow has got a 4.5. It stands in the 82nd percentile. So it just tells you that when so here it says 94th percentile. What does it mean? This means that 94 percentage of the test takers have got a score below your score, below 164. This is very very important. This percentile varies every year. Almost every year, this percentile score varies. This is standard percentile that uh, ETS has put, and this is based on the difficulty level of the paper, the number of test takers on that particular day. It's not just the questions, it's it's also the number of test takers who do a questions, right, who take that test and have got it right on that particular day. So many other factors are taken into consideration. So converting from the raw score and a scale to a scale score, it's not a direct conversion here. So many other factors are taken into consideration and then the percentile is calculated. Here, so, if you look at this, 164 is 94th percentile. See how pathetically 161 comes to just the 77th percentile, right? So if you look at this, can you just think and ponder about it? Sham gets 160 in verbal and 160 in quant. Do you think he will have the same percentile in both? 
I'll just put up as a poll. Can you start the poll? Yes? No. Started. So 100% of you say it's no. Exactly. That's the right answer. They don't have the same percentile in both. We'll just sneak peek into what is this here all about. So this is the latest one. This is 2021 updated from ETS. So if you look at this, a scaled score of 160 in verbal stands at the 85th percentile, whereas the same score in quant comes to the 67th percentile. So 160 in verbal reasoning is 85th percentile, whereas the same score in quant is 67th percentile. And ETS, remember that ETS does not provide you a composite percentile. It's not the overall percentile they'll never provide you. They will gauge your verbal reasoning skills separately and then your quant reasoning skills separately. Reason is, if you go for, it depends on the program that you're planning to apply. For example, if you plan to apply for a master's in computer science, right, abroad, definitely they look at your quant score more. And if you look, if you're planning to apply for a humanities course abroad, an arts course or in a design course abroad, they look at your verbal skills more. Yeah, so it depends on what university or what uh, degree you want to apply for, what major you want to apply for university support. Depending on that, they will pick from the subjects, verbal reasoning or the quantitative reasoning. So an arts or humanities majors abroad would require you to have a good verbal score and also a good analytical writing score. But then for engineering majors, definitely, if you want to do engineering abroad, or if you want to do your computer science or a core science subject abroad, a STEM science subjects abroad, definitely you should, they look for a good quantitative reasoning score. So you should be very careful. You should put all your efforts to make sure that you are, you are in the top 10 percentile if you want to get your dream university. This is very, very important. If you look at this, see 167 or 168 is the 90th percentile. So you have to work really, really hard to get that 168 in quant if you are a STEM student. Yeah, to get into a good university. Top 10 percentile is what they, they generally that's considered to be a very good score and you will get in the dream university or university of your choice very easily. So GRA exam pattern. Now this is very, very important, approximately four hours. So which means you should be able to sit for the four hours duration, right? Sit through for that four hours in the test center to take the test. So you should get used to that by taking lots of practice tests, mock tests, when you enroll for a test prep. You have to take lots of mock tests, lots of practice tests so that you will be able to sit for that four hours. That is very important. More than your accuracy in the test, sitting through the examination for four hours, it's very important. And a verbal section, you will have two sections of verbal and two sections of quant, ideally. 30 minutes per section in verbal and 35 minutes per section in quant. The reason quant, the number, the time is more is because you might have to do some calculations. There is definitely an on-screen calculator also available in quant, which you can use. You can use the on-screen calculator, which is a basic scientific calculator, basic operations with the square roots and all that will be there. It's not a very high-end scientific calculator. It's an on-screen calculator, which you can pull and use it whenever you want to do the calculations. But as much as possible, we would expect you, the students, to avoid using this calculator because all these are all both strategies. I'll dwell into that more as we progress. So if you look at this, 20 questions in verbal, first section, 20 in quant, same thing applies to quant, I mean, verbal, 20 in quant, and the overall score is 260 to 340. Analytical writing section, there'll be two essays, tasks that will be given to you. You might have to analyze an issue or analyze an argument. It could be like a debating, right? Instead of doing it orally, you are going to, you'll be given a task. You will have to write for or against it, something like that. So essay one, essay two, each essay 30 minutes. Within that 30 minutes, you might have to think of a title for the essay, organize the essay, structure the content of the essay, present it well, make sure you don't have grammatical errors. One or two grammatical errors is allowed. They won't look at it so deeply. But if the essay is full of grammatical errors, definitely they will not accept it, obviously. right? So many typos, spelling mistakes, all those things should be avoided. So, so many things you need to concentrate on in that 30 minutes. That comes only by practice. Constant practice is what is required so that you are able to do this analyze, uh, issue and argument really well. That score is also equally important. Apart from this, there will be one section. Normally, the GRE has got five sections. There'll be like two verbal, two quant for sure. 
The third section could be a verbal section or a con section. That is the fifth section. It need not be the fifth section. When I say fifth section, out of five sections, it could be the first, second, in the index order, it could be any one of the five sections. That is called as an unscored section or a research section. Now, ETS has developed this section, created this section. They'll throw you this question. The number of questions will still be 20 in that. It could be a quant section, it could be a verbal section. The reason is they will give that questions and they will get gauge that question difficulty level based on the performance of the students. If several students have got those 20 questions right, or at least 50% of the questions right, they would know that these questions can be used for the next GRE exam. That is how they plan and create the questions. So that is why they have this research section or the unscored section. This score will not be counted to the overall score. But none of the test takers would know which section is that research section. There are five sections. Any one of these five sections can be the research section. Right? There is a misconception that the last section is always the research section, which is wrong. It could be even the first section. So you can have three quant sections and two verbal sections. Quant, verbal, quant, verbal, and quant. Or three verbal sections. You could have verbal, quant, verbal, quant, and verbal. Right? So one of these sections would be, it could be even a quant section. If, even if you have two quant sections, if you have three verbal sections, then one of that will be a research section, which is unscored, which means that score, if at all, they'll give you a score. That score, that score will not be counted towards the overall score. And this is a very, very important feature of GRE, section-wise adaptive test. I'll, later, I'll tell you the syllabus of it. Syllabus will be very simple, but this is what is the key, in the sense. See, normally, the first section, they make it of medium difficulty level, first one section. Assume that you are getting first quant section, then you have to go for the verbal, then quant, then verbal, then quant. Assume that you have three quant sections. The first quant section, assume that you have got many questions right in the first quant section. The second quant section, they will make it very difficult on purpose. The reason is they will want to pull the scores to a median score. Right? So if you have attempted many questions right in the first section, the first quant section, so the quant sections are section-based adaptive. The verbal sections are individually section-based adaptive. That is how it is. It's not like if you attempt well in the first quant section, the verbal section will be difficult. It's not like that. You have three quant sections, two verbal sections. First quant section difficulty level, second quant section difficulty level is dependent on the first one, the way you attempt the first one. So depending on how you perform in the first section, you will either see a harder, medium, or easier second section. So you will be, this is called a section-based adaptive, as in when you do the test, your questions will be thrown to you based on how you perform. So the key here is harder the section, the more weight it has in your overall score. Yeah. As I've been telling you so far, right? So GRE, it doesn't have a prescribed syllabus. So you have verbal, you have quant. As I told you, it's more, it develops your skills, your effective communication skills, your ability to write effectively, all those skills are developed. It also, the quantitative reasoning skills uh, develops your ability to think differently. It's a skill-based test. It's not a knowledge-based test that you see in your college, right? In your school and college days, you would have encountered all the exams and all. It's never like that. So it's always, you will have multiple choice questions. You will have different question types that are tested in quant and verbal. So last minute work, uh, last minute mugging up or root learning will never help you. And most of the questions, trust me in quant, right? Most of the questions will not uh, entitle you to use the formulae at all. Uh, in fact, none of the questions I would say would expect you to use lots of formulae. No tedious calculations. It is all going to be very simple concept-based questions. How well you apply the concept. The questions are framed differently. That's all is the key here. How do you attack those questions in a different manner? So you might have to unlearn the approach towards problem solving, unlearn the approach towards uh, doing an English test in your school and college, and then relearn some tactics to attack a test like GRE. This is very, very important. Unlearning and relearning. This is very important once you start preparing for your GRE exam. So here, if you can look at it, there's a clip part of somebody playing the violin. What does it tell you? So if you want to play in a violin concert, suppose tomorrow is a concert, you just can't practice this day. Practice it 
24 hours today and play it tomorrow, right? Definitely can't. It has to, you need to have a disciplined approach towards it. 30 days minimum practice is required. Every day, regular practice is required, right? Every day you have to go for a class, get tutored from masters, experts in that field, get practice. Once a tutor gives you the clue, right? How to do it and all that stuff, you have to come back home and practice that. Only then that skill gets developed. Skill, the musical skills, the academic skills get developed as you progress through the classes, through your mentor, through a structured learning. That is very, very important. Enrolling for a class and not just one to two days before the exam. Enrolling for a class at least 30 days before the exam. Develop that skills, the skills to attack a verbal section, the skills to write an essay, analyzing issue, analyzing argument essays, the skills to attack a quantitative comparison or a, a, a quantitative reasoning questions, the art of problem solving, the skill to solve a problem in a different manner as against what you had been doing all along in your school and college. That skill is developed over a period of time. So what is that skills that are tested? If you look at the verbal section, verbal section tests your vocabulary, text completion with one blank. These are different question types. Text completion with three blanks, sentence equivalence, reading completion, critical writing, reasoning, everything. Questions can come from any concept. Quant, if you look at this, arithmetic, algebra, geometry, coordinate geometry, data analysis, probability, and statistics. Most of the topics here, these you would have learned it in your primary, middle grade, and your High grade, high grade, it's all only to your ninth. No complex mathematics, no trigonometry, no calculus, nothing is tested in GR. If you look at it, basic concepts, basic properties of integers that is tested differently. Basic algebra, solving linear equations that is tested a little differently because the question types will be different. Different skills are tested in different question types. That is what GR is all about. So you can't just mug up prepare it it can be from arithmetic I say arithmetic it can be from uh, what do we say properties of integers sets of numbers odd and even numbers prime and composite numbers something that you have learned in your prime you all know that we all know what is given all the time in the world maybe we will be able to do this uh, all of us might get a 170 because the syllabus is only that right all those students who even uh, who have lost touch with mathematics after their 10th grade probably right they could have a, just a refresher of it and then get a full marks but this is a timed test. Within that time duration, given that question, how will you apply the concept differently? That is that tactics is what GRE is all about. That is where the trap is kept by ETS. <clears throat> so last minute mugging or last minute preparation will not work. Question types in GRE. So verbal reasoning, you have definitely a reading comprehension passage. As I told you, it's very, very important to focus on English. There's a set of words that you have to master to crack the verbal. The verbal reasoning sits on the pillar of vocabulary. You might have to really mug up, literally mug up, but it's not that normal mugging up. You have to understand that word, where that word fits in into the sentences, right? It could be like the same word in the diff two different sentences will mean, two, will mean two different things. You have to understand that, the meaning of that word in different contexts. That is very important. So vocabulary is very, very important for GRE. You have to learn, master the vocabulary. If you look at it earlier when uh, Gita Pia started her introduction, there was this vocabulary app, Galvanize vocabulary app that was there in the screen. So you have to download it. Beautiful vocabulary app. There's flashcards that, that will give you like, you have pictures of the words used in different contexts. You can master that words very easily. So that is very important thing. Once you master those, doing this reading comprehension with a little difference, like just understand the strategies, it's going to be very simple. But mastering the words is the key here. You have to master the words in vocabulary. And quantitative reasoning. So there are like four different question types here in quantitative reasoning. It's simple math only, but then different types of questions are tested. Quantitative comparison questions, multiple choice questions, where one answer choice is given, uh, one answer choice has to be submitted. Multiple choice questions, where one or more answer choices have to be submitted. Numeric entry questions. Apart from this, you have graph questions also. It could be a histogram, pie graph, pie chart, or uh, it could be a line graph, any type of graph that you would come across, right? That would be tested. You have to just infer from the graph and answer it. 
the questions would be based on simple arithmetic. What is the ratio of this and this? What fraction of this is this? Something like that will be tested. That will be like two sets of questions. One set of graph will, one graph will have three questions. Another graph, three questions. That is how the questions are framed. And these will all be MCQs, multiple choice question with single answer choice as the right answer. Right. These are the question types in both verbal and the quantitative reasoning. Now, strategies. As I told you, any timed test, any type, whether it's even your uh, JE or even at school, right? If you have a test, descriptive test. So there are some strategies that you need to follow. In your school or college, they would have told you, right? If it's a five mark question, you do this first. Just do this first, do this. Don't write long, long answers. Some tips might be given to you. The same tips, a different type of tips will be given for GI. Strategies is the key word. With the strategies only, you will be able to attack or get the perfect score. So there are students who would have got a perfect score in math, for example, 170 on 170. But those students, trust me, if you give them this paper and ask them to write it as a descriptive paper for 100 marks, definitely they will not go score a center. But what is it that they know? What is it that makes a difference between a person who gets a 160 and a person who gets a 170? Right? It is that strategy. Same thing applies for verbal also. If you apply the strategy properly, right? Syllabus is very, very simple syllabus. Arithmetic, algebra, geometry, and all that stuff. Lines and angles. Geometry, very basic geometry, what you had learned in your middle school. That's all. But what is it that makes a person different? Right, get to get a perfect score against a person who has not got a perfect score. It is that application of strategies. The person who has got a perfect score or near perfect score would know the knack of attacking that problem. He would have unlearned this method of analytical approach towards the problem, relearned this knack of attacking the problem. That is very important in GR. So remember, this is not a math test. Strategies for quant. This is not a math test. It's a skill based test. It tests one's critical thinking skills in a timed environment. So strategies, quantitative comparison questions. So it tests your approximation tar strategies. So at Galmes, we teach you something called a zone of structured way of plugging in numbers. Two quantities will be given to you. You have to analyze which one is greater or which one is lesser or if both the quantities are equal. If you cannot come to a conclusion, you just say that the relationship cannot be determined. Right? For that, you have to approach it in a different way. Right? The normal problem solving approach will not help because this has to be every question type has got a time limit in the sense that time limit will not be there in the, in the actual test but you have to understand the time allotted for each question only then you will be able to save on time quantitative comparison question you should not take more than a minute that means you have to apply the strategies given here multiple choice questions multiple choice questions beautiful thing about multiple choice questions is the answers are there in front of you this technique applies to both verbal and quant multiple choice questions weed out the wrong answers eliminate the wrong answers the right answers will be in front of you that is the strategy you need to adopt for a multiple choice question also back substitution what skills are tested in multiple answer questions again the same thing Numeric entry question. Now, this would be a little, uh, what do I say, tougher to handle because here in numeric entry questions, you might have to follow an analytical approach. But even these questions, if you uh, understand the strategies of plugging in values, substitution and all that, definitely you will be able to crack these numeric entry questions within two minutes, each question. Now, here numeric entry questions will be mostly like a, what do I say, paragraph question. It could be like a, a word problem. That is what numeric questions, where entry questions are all about. So it tests your ability to round off numbers, plugging in numbers. When you look at the skills that is tested, you feel that ah, this is very simple. But when you apply it only, you will know that people tend to forget to apply it properly. That comes only by practice. Strategies for GRE verbal. Reading comprehension, RC passages is very, very important. Now, let me tell you, if you understand how to read a passage, it is not like in your school days and all that a passage will be given to you. And what, what we do, a question will be asked. We look at where that question line is there in the paragraph, whatever passage that's given, and write the answer. That is not GRE verbal. That is not how you will attack GRE verbal. It, as I told you, it, it involves critical thinking skills. It enhances your critical thinking skills. What to read, how to read, what to analyze, what all features you need to look at. What are all the key points that you need to note? This is all very, very important for reading comprehension. 
and this helps you to crack your word problems here also numeric entry comprehending word problems this is very important this skill is common to both verbal and quant how do you comprehend a word problem we teach something called as divide and conquer strategy break the problem into parts collect and connect the information and then frame the equation albert einstein the great physicist once said it just takes 99% of your time only to comprehend the problem remaining 1% to solve the problem solving the problem is very very easy understanding the problem is the crux here understanding framing the equation that is all it's all about and the same thing applies to reading comprehension passages also what to analyze what to look at this is very very important text completion fill up the blank identify the key phrases find the best benefit uh, best fit among the options connect key phrases to the options this is very important connecting the phrases to the options choices will be given to you when when we say uh, the options the choices four or five choices will be given to you there are like different text completions that could be single blank completion double blank completion tri triple blank completion also accordingly the strategy still remains the same accordingly you will have to answer it so no partial credit when i talked about multiple answer questions and all these text completions with two blanks or three blanks no partial credit will be given to you like if you answer just one of the answer choices to be right and then two answer choices to be wrong and if you don't answer submit two answer choices then entire credit will go off just because you answered one question one option correctly you will not get one mark for that no no partial credits for multiple answer questions and all these text completion questions with double and triple blanks so time management for each question type as i told you just like quant where i told you quantitative comparison question should be less than 1 minute you have time management skills for this uh, verbal also for rc questions finish reading a short passage within 2 minutes and a long one within 3 minutes this is very very important understand that you have to have a timer with you when you practice also right at galmes and mock tests you will have a timer that's running so you will know when to submit it but when you open practice on your own have your timer with you definitely that is very important to uh, save on time or understand that time factor time management is a key key skill for gr text completion try to identify the answer within 30 seconds and critical reasoning question choose your answer within 1 minute so time management is a key factor in both gre verbal and quant so what does it say well it's not going to lift itself right so lift you have to lift it take all hard work put all your effort and lift it that is what you need to do for gre also how to achieve your goal practice well at galnes what is the magic formula we give you a personalized study plan right that will be like working professionals that will be students in college who will be having their exams and all that we are like what do i say you, you the calendar we will tell you here hey this is the plan that you need to follow this day first day you do this second day you do this task third day you do this task just follow that meticulously for every student we have a dedicated course manager also we who will help you who will put checkpoints if you have done your mock test we'll send you reminders so many features are there with calendars right we help you succeed in your attempt in your first step towards your admission to the universities we'll constantly track and analyze your performance we'll just give you a detailed analysis also for every mock test we we also have uh, videos our material will have videos also which will give you strategies to attack every question type whatever was discussed so far in length and breadth that will be discussed in the videos also right now that we learned about gre gre you had both the math and the verbal section right but definitely that as i told you there is more importance given for english toefl and ielts these are very very important english tests that is also required by universities apart from gre gre tests both your english and math tests but the english test tested by gre is different from the english tested through ielts and toefl so they test english in different ways rather that was that's what i would say if you look at the gi analytic section analytical writing section they test your writing skills in a different way but here in ielts and toefl they test different uh, skills that is your listening reading writing and speaking skills all the four skills are tested through ielts and toefl so what is toefl toefl is a test of english as a foreign language so you might ask me this question we still have we have verbal for gre why why are they testing this again so toefl it's like a standalone test only to test your english skills 
listening, reading, writing, and speaking skills. All the four skills are tested in a different manner apart from the ones that you have for verbal and analytical writing sections, right? So the speaking skills, they test your ability to think instantly and start answering. In your listening skills, how well you are able to listen to the audio. That listening skills is not tested in GRE verbal. They don't have an audio that's played. As I told you, right, when I started this session, I told you, you should be able to understand what the professor is talking to you when you go for your master's or a PhD, right? That listening skill is very, very important. Speaking, you should be able to communicate your ideas effectively. That is where the speaking skills is tested. Clear? Yeah? Those two skills are not tested in GRE verbal. That is why they have this additional TOEFL or IELTS. So what is TOEFL? Test of English as a foreign language. Non-native English speakers have to write this TOEFL exam. So, so that we can understand the accent in US, accent given by the professors, how, in what accent they speak and all that. So to understand that, right, for non-native English speakers, they require you to write this TOEFL exam. TOEFL exam, mostly it's preferred by US universities. IELTS is preferred by uh, Canadian, European universities, UK, all that. In UK especially, there is something called as SELT, right, a standard English language test. So IELTS is the only approved SELT test approved by UK universities. UK, Canada and Australia mostly prefer IELTS over TOEFL, but that's up to you. Where you want to go, depending on that, take the test, TOEFL or IELTS. Definitely both TOEFL and IELTS test you on the same skills, listening, reading, writing and speaking skills. Now, TOEFL is a computer-based test. Like your GRE, which is a computer-based test, TOEFL is also a computer-based test and you can attend the TOEFL once in 12 days. So it just tests your ability to communicate in an academic environment. TOEFL is mostly for academic, but still there are people who want to go for, um, go to work also are entitled to take this TOEFL exam. Go and serve, go for migration and migration and then stay for citizenship. For everything, this TOEFL is required. Whereas GRE, if you look at it, that's only for academics, only for study abroad. But TOEFL and IELTS, whether you want to work abroad or you want to stay back there, immigrate to a country, settle there as a citizen, you have to, TOEFL and IELTS are mandatory requirements. GRE, you can take it only after you do your undergraduation in your country of which was wherever you are residing, right? This is only for your post-graduation or your research. But TOEFL and IELTS, you can take it after you complete your 10th also. Right, 10th or 11th or 12th, you can take your, your TOEFL and IELTS exams. So TOEFL, it's, you can attempt it once in 12 days. IELTS is International English Language Testing System. It also evaluates the four skills and it's conducted 48 times a year with four times in a month. Unlike TOEFL, right, TOEFL is IBT. IELTS can be taken on paper or on computer, but computer-based test is the most preferred one. Though the paper-based based test is still available, it's conducted by an organization called as IDP. TOEFL is still conducted by ETS, but IELTS is conducted by IDP. And TOEFL, it's just one TOEFL exam, you have to write it. Whether you want to go for work, you will go on, you want to go and settle in some country for immigration or for citizenship, or you want to study abroad, right? For all the cases, there's just one TOEFL, uh, standard TOEFL exam that you need to write. But then for IELTS, different IELTS structure is there for IELTS. Suppose you want to go for higher studies, then IELTS Academy. Suppose you want to go and settle there for immigration purpose or uh, settle there as a citizen, citizen and you want to go for work and all that, you will take the IELTS general training. Structure will be little, slightly different, that's all. But the basic syllabus and all that will be the same for both IELTS Academic and IELTS general, general, general Training. So here, a little comparison between IELTS and TOEFL. So normally this question students ask, right? There are two English tests. As such, we have a GRE verbal, and then we have on top of it, we have two English tests, English proficiency uh, testing uh, exams, IELTS and TOEFL. What is the difference between both? Here. IELTS is accepted by many US and Canadian universities and most UK and Commonwealth nation institutions accepted by most US and Canadian universities. TOEFL is accepted mainly by US universities. Even in Canada, they accept mostly IELTS, but TOEFL is accepted mainly by US universities. IELTS used to be conducted by British Council, but then right now it's conducted only by ITP. 
and TOEFL is conducted by ITS. ETS. What is the latest news about IELTS is that IELTS has got four sections, listening, reading, writing and speaking sections. In that, if you want to retake IELTS, right, it happens 42 times in a year. And then if you want to retake IELTS, suppose you feel that you have not done well in one module, say listening, reading, writing and speaking. If you feel that you have not done well in one module, say listening section or a reading section, you can retake only that module. This is the latest information, latest update on IELTS. But that's not the case for TOEFL. You have to retake the entire TOEFL exam. Suppose you feel that you have to improve your score, you have to retake the entire TOEFL exam. Now, <clears throat> as I told you, the test dates, uh, IELTS is uh, 48 times in a year. And for TOEFL, it's like conducted 50 times in a year. It's mostly on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, towards the weekends. IELTS, Thursdays and Saturdays, but not every week. And you have to look at, check for the IELTS dates on the website. Even for TOEFL, you have to check for the dates on the website. ETS conducts TOEFL. You have to check for it, uh, register, book a slot, and then prepare for this uh, exam. And then uh, write the exam. The test fee for IELTS is 15,500 INR for both paper-based and computer-based tests. And for TOEFL is $190. And fees may vary from $160 to $225, depending on the country. In India, it is $190. Score scale. This is very important. IELTS is like GRE, if you look at it, it's, it's on a scale of 260 to 340. But IELTS, the band is just 0 to 9. On a band of 0 to 9, the entire IELTS is evaluated. But a TOEFL is for a scale of 120. The scores will be for 120. So a good uh, TOEFL score is generally above 108. That comes to around 92nd percentile or something. 92nd percentile is 108, score of 108. A good TOEFL score would be above 108. If you get, you get a good university of your choice. Now, what is this TOEFL and IELTS very, very important for? When you go abroad, all students who are going abroad for the master's or a PhD, or even for their undergraduation, right? If they go abroad, they would want to do all international students. Uh, I'm talking about international students. They would want to do a research assistantship or take up a TA, teaching assistantship. This is a very common word that you would have heard from students who have gone abroad, a TA or a RA. To get that TA or RA, it's very, very easy if you get a very good score in IELTS and TOEFL. That is how importance they give for English. Your ability to crack your IELTS or your TOEFL is very good. That is, if you get a score of about 108 in TOEFL and a band of, say, for from 0 to 9, if you get around 7.5 or 7 or above in IELTS, then your chance of getting a TA ship, teaching assistantship or a research assistantship is very, very high, apart from your GPA. So even if your GPA is a little low, first semester you go there, First semester GPA is low. Assume that you have started your master's. First semester GPA is low. Definitely based on your uh, IELTS and your TOEFL scores, you can always get your TA ship easily. Score validity is only two years. As I told you, students who want to go for undergraduate studies, they take their SAT, PS, SAT exam to go abroad for undergraduate study. They can also take this TOEFL or IELTS in their grade 11. So it's valid for two years. In the end of 10th grade or 11th grade, they can take the TOEFL exam and the IELTS exam and or IELTS exam. They don't have to take both, obviously, right? Doesn't make sense to take both. Okay. As I told you, there are four sections, both TOEFL and IELTS, test your skills on reading, listening, speaking, and writing. The duration is three hours. If you looked at GRE, the duration was four hours. Here it's three hours. IELTS is both paper-based and computer-based test. TOEFL is just a computer-based test. And so what is this uh, in IELTS, right? You might have to type so many answers. That is one, uh, what do I say? I wouldn't call it as a disadvantage, uh, extra feature I would say for IELTS. But TOEFL, you might have to submit it. It's like mostly multiple choice and objective questions. Here there'll be lots of Phillips matching types and all that will be there for IELTS. You'll have to drag and drop an answer, type an answer. So many typing might be required for you in IELTS. And the speaking test. Speaking is what is different in IELTS and TOEFL. Speaking test, right? In a TOEFL, a speaking test will be conducted as part of your exam. On the exam date, you have the reading, listening, writing, and the speaking section. Normally, all the four sections will follow each other in the TOEFL on the exam date. You will finish your speaking section also there, where you have to record it on the, on the screen, right? There'll be a recording button. You will have to speak 
on a topic, the preparation time will be given to you. 15 seconds or 20 seconds will be given to you. Within that time, you have to prepare that topic and then speak. The topic will also be so seen on the screen. You will have to speak, record it. That's very important for TOEFL. But then, and then that is rated by or graded by E-Rater. That's a software that grades your TOEFL skills, TOEFL uh, exam. It's uh, AI-enabled software, artificial intelligence-enabled software. That is what is going to grade your TOEFL. But IELTS, it's still manually graded. Right? When you speak, right, you will have an uh, interview scheduled, a speaking test scheduled uh, seven days a week before or after your actual exam date. You will have to go in person or it could be online also. And you will have to talk to a human being. A human being will be there, a person will be there who is going to question you and ask you, test your speaking skills. So that is how IELTS is conducted. That's a major difference between, difference between IELTS and TOEFL. Right. I hope you had a good idea of the standardized test so far, GRE, IELTS and TOEFL, and little idea of what is the difference between all the three, right? What is the advantage of taking GRE, IELTS and TOEFL? And which which you, you want to take if you want to go for UK universities, if you want to go to US, which English speaking test would you would you plan to take? I hope you got a fair idea. And if you enroll with Gadmis, as I told you, it's all about strategies. Standardized, standardized tests are all about strategies. We teach you all the strategies. We have thousand plus questions on the platform. You'll have lots of practice also applying the strategies. And then we give you an atomic analysis. Detailed feedback report will also be sent to you. And if you need, there'll be an intervention call with the instructors also for you. There'll be a dedicated course manager who's going to help you, walk you through, give you checkpoints at every place, right? Even if you're tied up with your uh, homework or so college work or your exams at college, or even if you're professional, right? You're working and all that. The course managers will remind you, hey, this is your time when you have to complete this mock test. Hey, this is the time you have not completed these many tasks. You have to do it. The reminders will be sent by the course managers. So this is it about the standardized test. I would uh, give the mantle to La Lavanya. So she will briefly explain about the pre-departure requirements for uh, overseas education. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Sailor. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Hey, um, after hearing all these things like uh, GRE, TOEFL, all these things, you, your mind is filled with like, I'm going to get enrolled with this. Now let's talk about this value added services. When we talk about value added services, what and all comes in that? Yeah, it's uh, it's about the educational loan. Once you got enrolled in the university, you got the admission. Everything is going out fine. Then uh, next thing you that comes into your mind is like uh, how I'm going to arrange fund for this educational loan that will help you. So we are going to talk about the educational loan, Forex, air ticketing, travel insurance, uh, accommodation, how you have to uh, go for your uh, SIM card, bank account and all those things. First let's uh, see about educational loan. So uh, <clears throat> when you enroll with us for uh, GRE uh, admission counseling and all those things, then we are here to help you for this application, uh, educational loan. So, what are the things required for that? It's it's a very easy process. There is no cost involved in this. It's a uh, documentation is very less. Students have uh, the, uh, different options to pick up from different loan providers. Um, we, you will be attached with. Uh, our loan expert will be guiding you through like which provider you can um, opt for and all those things. You will be having a personalized consultation with the counselor also. Yeah. Next is, there are a uh, few types of loans I would uh, like to talk about. There are secured and unsecured loans. You might be knowing about this. Like many banks, uh, they opt for secured loans. Common bank, they uh, normally <clears throat> give secured loans. When we talk about secured loans, there will be some collateral, like uh, you will be pledging your uh, house, land, etc. And uh, they require co-signer as well. Like any one of the uh, working member will be signing for you on behalf of you for uh, acquiring this loan. There are unsecured loans. 
uh, without collateral and without co-signer, we have unsecured loans. This is basically about uh, our loan partner will be uh, tied up with the universities. So once you get those universities, there won't be any um, collateral need to be uh, given or co-signer required for that. So we are tied up with uh, so many uh, financial institutions like um, government banks we have, Gyandan, HDFC Credilla, Incred, as you can see, we are tied up with Axelo, Evans, Empower is there, Prodigy Finance is also there, Access Bank is there. From these you can choose any one of your according to your requirement. Our, so one of our students have uh, secured loan for uh, <clears throat> $105,000. She has given a testimonial saying that it, it really helped her a lot uh, when she went through Galvanize. She got admitted in uh, Red Bulls, the State University of New Jersey. And she was a working professional earlier and she was with uh, Siemens. Now, let's see about Forex. Forex, as you all know, exchange in the currency of one country uh, to the other one. While you go with uh, us, it's fully online. Again, documentation is very less. You can avail foreign currency collection at the airport. The conversion rate will be lesser than others. Now, all these things are over. We will be looking out for accommodation. So, we have services all over. Like Europe, UK, Ireland, USA, South America, Canada, Singapore, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand so many other. We can provide you wide range of uh, rooms according to your needs. Rent will be um, competitive. It ranges according, again, it's uh, customized according to your need. You can choose any of the rooms available. Yeah? We, uh, for this also, we have different partners associated with us in different countries. Now, let's see about bank account. So once all these things are over, we will be definitely looking out for banking related things. So we have a tie up with um, a local bank there in uh, all the countries. Once uh, you download the app, it's, it's completely um, online. So once you download the app, you have to upload your I-20 and passport copy. Uh, within 24 hours the process will get over and you will get the approval after opening the account you have to you will be receiving a virtual debit card till you get your <coughs> international debit card once you land in your uh, desired country and update your uh, physical address to the app you will be uh, shipped the international debit card after that you can use uh, you know, you can transfer money. Once a visa is approved, the money transfer will happen. Advantages of banking with us. Transactions are fully done through our app. So, no need to, uh, you know, um, look for physical bank. The app shows the nearest ATMs available. Our partner is locally associated. Uh, the student accounts are uh, insured. When money is transferred from your home, home country, there won't be any transfer fee for this. Unless other banks. So then comes about your international SIM card. So it's a, uh, our SIM card is US based phone number with, uh, you will get a SIM card with uh, 5G internet. You can start paying once you start using it, you can pause it anytime. If you are uh, flying from there to India, then you can pause it, then you can restart it once you reach there. There are wide range of plans which is given here like 6 GB, 10 GB unlimited data. For this also you have to just provide your I-20 and passport copy to avail this SIM. Once you download the app and registered 
with us with your i20 and passport your sim card will be given it uh, send it to we will send it send the sim card to your registered address in india itself once you receive it you can start using the sim card one day before you leave the country you just have to add this 20 digit number which is available in the sim packet the activation will be done immediately and automatically through the app so these are the things value added things you will be getting once you get enrolled with galnice we will be helping you throughout once you decide to study abroad thank you for listening patiently thanks a lot any doubts yeah students if you have any doubts now you can just drop it in the chat box so our expert will just uh, answer all your questions now both in chat as well as in qaa uh, qna you can just drop your questions okay lavanya ma'am uh, abhishek has asked this interesting question how yeah, can people learn easily in abroad in abroad abhishek There's basically no shortcut to anything, no Abhishek. Everything has to be done so in a structured manner. Very good uh, admission in a good university. Obviously, yes, uh, there will be. Uh, you will be finding a good uh, opening there. To go back to the first slide that we shared, GRE a very good GRE score, admission to a good, great university, and your profile is very high, and then you land the best job. so there is no shortcut technique you have to follow this process but there are shortcut techniques to approach a gre problem yeah follow that <laughs> you will be able to do that you can easily earn abroad once you cross that benchmark right then earning abroad is very very easy once you go there and settle then it's all yours lots of opportunities there opportunity galore okay any other questions you have guys I hope all the questions, like uh, all the answers, have got through the uh, through the webinar itself. So let us move on. I guess this is the end of the session. So uh, if you want to reach Calvinize, like Calvinize will help you in everything. So as well as uh, I'll just drop the uh, profile evaluation link uh, shortly, so you can just. Uh, uh, Yeah, we have another questions which is on how to decide whether we should go for an MBA or MS uh, in abroad, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lavanya, would you like to take this? Uh. Um. Uh, Raj, may I ask you uh, what you are doing now? What's your UG? So basically, depends on what your interests are, uh, Sumitraj. so what what is it that you plan to major in right so you could be uh, you could do your ug in an engineering or your uh, arts or whatever it is so it depends on what you want to do abroad you could do an ms or an mba it doesn't matter at all and there is no like all along right so you have been accepting gmat scores but right now all the universities almost accept gre scores so you don't have to worry about it you can do whatever you want to mba or ms abroad it doesn't matter it depends on which university you want to and their requirements each university has got a specific set of requirements so there is like definite set of gre scores that each university looks for for example if you want to do go for ms in computer science right then obviously as i told you during the webinar the, your quantitative reasoning scores should be really high if you want to do your mba definitely both your quantitative and your verbal scores should be really high yeah it depends on what you want to do you are free to do you are free to go and look for the universities which give you mba or ms You you can apply to any university or any major that you want to. It's up to you. But then getting a good score is very very important. That is the key here. What is it that the university is looking for? They have their own requirements, a cutoff score for GRE, and also cutoff scores for IELTS and TOEFL. Basically, it depends on their interests. Exactly. Uh, Sumit says he's a B Tech student in, in the computer, computer science, science department. Yeah, you could do both, either MS or MBA. 
it's up to you so like you could you you want to do your ms in business analytics or just mba it's fine you can do either but you don't have to write a separate exam for mba it's same gre that's accepted for mba also i hope that answers your question sumit okay any other questions guys i goes the uh, i think that's it okay these are the information of gals nice so you can just copy it somewhere or you can just ha have a look at our website so we all uh, we have all the details in our website also so thank you thank you so much if you have a lot more questions you can just email that advisor at galnaysme.com they will be glad to uh, escalate those questions to us and uh, we will be responding to them yeah Be free to ask questions um, post your questions through mail So, okay thank you thank you so much ma'am for patiently explaining everything so and thank you so much uh, students without you this wouldn't have been happening so i hope uh, this session is very informative for you people so this might uh, help you in some of your journey uh, some part of your journey so thank you we'll keep you posted with all the you know sessions and webinars the contest uh, uh, in your uh, mail id so don't hurry thank you thank you so much um, you know, we'll meet in another a good webinar like this So have a good day. Thanks so much to all. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.